Hi guys, Jim here and welcome to Budget RC. This is our second video in our three-part series dealing with the assembly, installation, and troubleshooting of the new Gen 7 axles. So stick around. Hey guys, welcome back. So this is part two of our video series dealing with the Gen 7 axles. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take your fully installed axles and install them into the vehicle. Now, I do run into some problems toward the end. I'll take you through those problems, and then in our next video, we'll show you how to take care of those problems and make sure that these work their best. So let's get started. So now we're gonna get started by removing the rear axle assembly from the vehicle. In order to do this, your first step will be removing your rear wheels, and we're gonna go ahead and take all four wheels off the vehicle now. Okay guys, once our wheels are off, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is to remove the shocks and the lower links from the axle assembly on each side. So I'm gonna grab the nut on the back side, remove the screw. Once we do that, we can pull the shock and the link right out. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to the other side now as well. Once we've got that removed, now it's the same thing on the upper link. I'm gonna grab the nut with the pliers, I'm gonna remove the screw, and then this will come right apart. Now you can separate your drive shaft and your axles out of your vehicle. So lastly, with this out of the vehicle, you're just going to want to back this grub screw out that's holding the drive shaft onto the pinion shaft. So now we can put this axle aside. So now is a neat comparison. You can see the two axles side by side and you can really see how this portal axle differs. Not only do you have the portals that lift the whole assembly up, but the center section itself is quite a bit smaller. It's much more compact. And I think because of this, we're really going to have quite a bit better ground clearance. Overall, this feels like a much higher quality plastic as well. And the axles inside of it were quite a bit larger, so I think it's gonna be stronger too. Overall, quite a nice assembly. So now we can install the drive shaft. So now we can open up bag seven and we can get our shock mount relocation brackets out and we can start installing those. In order to do that, what we want to do is to first remove these stock shocks and then remove this cross member. So let's do that now. So once you have that cross member out, now we're going to take our new mount and we're going to put three screws in it. We're going to use the top two holes as well as one of the lower holes. Each one of these is an M3 by 10 millimeter screw. This will go just like this. One thing I want to make sure I mention to you guys is that when you do this installation, in order to be able to reinstall your body mount, you do need to deviate slightly from the instructions. Instead of using a nut on the back side of these two screws, you're going to want to make sure that those screw directly into the back side of this mount. And then you just use the nut to retain the forward screw. As long as you do that, everything will go in perfectly. Once these mounts are installed, now we can put our shocks on. Now we can go ahead and install our shocks. If you've got this little black spacer on your shock mounts, make sure you keep it there. I would like a little bit more thread engagement, but if we take that spacer off, the top, top of the shock cap actually hits the screws here. So we're gonna wanna keep that. So just go ahead and put it in there, put your lock nut on the back side, and then do the same thing for the other shock. Okay, so let's get this rear axle installed. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is to remove both of these lower links and what you're going to do is turn them around. Initially this bend here was very close to the axle but what happens when you install them that way is that your links end up hitting the frame right around here when the suspension compresses. This is one of the issues I had mentioned early on about addressing in video three but I wanted to go through it now also so that you don't have to go back and do this after you complete your installation. Once you take these off, what you'll want to do are take these little inserts out and swap them front to back because this is more, more of a standard insert. This one here has a big space to push this out further. You're going to want to make sure that that spaced out piece stays up at the front of the frame. Once you get those swapped around, you just want to rotate this 90 degrees so that now your bend is kind of moving it away from the frame. And then you can go ahead and reinstall the links in the stock position. Likewise, with your upper links, you want to rotate the links 90 degrees so that this arc is facing up 
instead of inbound like they were. If you leave them the way they're set up for the factory axles, it'll end up hitting your drive shaft. This is real simple to just rotate these 90 degrees. So once that's all done, now we can start putting the axle in. Get your drive shaft in, and now the easiest thing to do will be to put your upper links in first. So you're gonna put the screw through that link, then through your axle, then you can put your other link on, and once you have that on, you can just put the nut on. And lastly, you can just install the nut. The next step is to just put your lower links on. You're gonna to wanna to use the lower hole. Once this lower link is installed, you can just do the same thing on the other side. Next, you wanna pop these ball mounts out of the lower shock eyes. Once you pop those out, the shocks can mount right to those ball studs in the axle. And once those are on, your rear end installation is complete. Make sure everything flexes and works well. And you can see that there's plenty of room between these components here because of our lower mount relocation. The servo from the vehicle. I'm going to remove the servo from the front axle and just move it out of the way. So now we've got our servo unhooked. We can just remove it from the mount. And for now, we're going to hang it up here. Next, we can take our shocks off and we can remove the lower links and the upper links from the axle assembly and take the axle itself right out. Okay, so now we have the front axle assembly out and just like with the rear, what we wanna do is transfer our drive shaft over to the new axle. Now we'll reinstall these shock relocation mounts just like we did in the rear. So I've got the front shock towers on and they go on just like the rears do. The only, the only difference is you just need to make sure that this is positioned all the way forward and that you've got your two screws holding it in, otherwise it'll pivot. Um, again, I've got the shocks mounted all the way back, tilted as far as they'll go. That's what the instructions recommend as the default setup, so I'm going to try it. So now we're going to move on to the servo mount. And the servo mount is going to mount utilizing these holes here. And it's going to mount just like this. Now the problem with that is that where I've got my bumper mounted, this is going to interfere with my ability to mount that. So what I'm going to have to do is move this forward or cut the rear portion of this off so that I have room for the mount. I'm going to take the second option because I don't want to move my bumper forward. So what I'll have to do is for now take this bumper off, I'll get the servo plate mounted, and then we're going to have to trim this back to make sure everything fits. To get this off, there's just two screws on each side. We back these out and it'll come right off. Now I'm going to try to do this in a somewhat delicate manner because I don't want to disturb all of my wiring if I can help it. Okay guys, so I've got this mounted in and the instructions say to use an 18 millimeter long M3 screw and to go all the way in and put a lock nut on the back side. The screw holes through this mount are so small that these tightened up real tight just into the mount itself. So I'm not going to run the lock nuts. And to be honest, I'll probably replace these screws with some from my collection because I just don't see the need for such long screws. But that went in without any drama. Now we just need to get this to fit. Now this is going to be a little bit more work because I don't want to disturb my wiring. So I'm going to take this out to my workshop where I've got my cutoff wheel. But what I'm going to do is just cut this right near this hole. And then I'll also cut this back as well so that it can fit right back in here the way it was, but in another hole. So I'll get that done and then we'll be back. Okay guys, so I've got this trimmed back. Now it fits into here just like it was made for it. So now we're just gonna put these same screws back in it and that should be all set. All right, so I've got this reinstalled. You can see we reused the same screws and now everything fits back together on the front. So now what we'll do is go ahead and put the front axle in. Now for the upper and lower links and the shocks, the procedure will be exactly the same as the rear. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that portion of it. Then we'll come back and we'll do the panard rod, we'll do the steering linkages and we'll get the servo installed. So now what we're going to do is install the upper links. And in order to do this, what you want to do is turn your driver's side link so that the arc is facing up. Your passenger side link we're going to remove entirely. For those of you that are paying attention, you may see, you may recognize that this axle is almost fully assembled here. And that's because the first time I installed this, I actually installed both links and the suspension would bind. Which makes a lot of sense because the whole purpose of a four link suspension is to center the axle and to keep it centered. 
when you introduce a pan hard rod its purpose is also to keep the axle centered but it does it in a very different way and the two competing geometries actually caused a bind when the suspension would compress so i've gone back read through the directions i realize now that this passenger side link needs to be removed so now we can take this other link mount it right through the upper hole in the axle housing we can put our nut on the back side and snug it up and if, if you're doing this in order it should be a little easier to get to like i said because I already had this fully assembled before I realized my mistake, I'm kind of going back after the fact to do this. So now that that's done, what we want to do is just pop off the passenger side lower link so that we can get to the mounting hardware of the upper link to remove it. With that out of the way, now we can just pop this upper link off. Don't forget to put your lower link back on. So now we can go ahead and put the shocks on. And then once those are on, we'll start mounting up the pan hard rod and we'll get the steering links mounted. So guys, just like I was afraid of when I was putting this together, this ball right here that the shock mounts to is so close to this mount, I can't fit the shock eyelet through here to get it installed. So what I'm gonna have to do is remove all this stuff, take this mount off, install the shock, and then put this stuff back on. So once that's off, the shock eyelet goes on, and now that mount can be reinstalled. All right, so now the pan hard mount is going to mount right to the screw that we left in the servo mount, but I can't get my screwdriver back there. So what we're gonna have to do is drop the servo mount, install that, then reinstall the servo mount. All right, guys, so if you're like me and you forgot to do this before you installed the servo mount, all you have to do is take the back two screws out of the servo mount so that it tips down. Once it tips down, once it tips down, you can access this screw hole which I already had the screw in so that I wouldn't lose. Now we can put the screw through the eyelet and the pan hard rod. Now we can put the screw through the eyelet and back into that servo mount. So now that that's in, we can put the screws back into the servo mount. So now we can put on our servo. To do that, I just had to pull a little bit more slack. This is gonna sit right down in here and it'll mount with some nuts and some screws. So now it looks like these holes are threaded. These holes are small enough that I can thread these screws down from the top. Although to be honest, this isn't going to be strong enough so we're gonna to wanna to run a nut up from the bottom. But we'll get the screws in first. And I appear to only have three screws remaining in this length. Fortunately, I have a lot more screws so I can grab one later. But for now, we're gonna have it installed with three. So now another thing that I found that I really don't like is that this screw here interferes with the mount right here. So there's not enough room for me to put a nut on there. Likewise, I'm not gonna be able to run the screw in from this side and put a nut on the top. So that one's gonna have to live without a nut. I'm not sure I'm thrilled about that either. So now it's time to mount our steering linkage. And the way this is gonna mount, this will go right onto here. We'll put our screw in, then we'll put our bushing into this side and install it right there. And then we've got the link that goes up to the servo. So what I'm going to do is instead of putting this down from the top and putting the nut at the bottom, I'm gonna run this up from the bottom. And that way you don't have the screw with the nut hanging down. It just keeps that screw and that nut from hanging down where it could impact obstacles. And run your screw through here, just like the other side. Now this bushing can come up from the bottom this can go over the screw. Now we can install our nut. So now before you install your arm, just make sure everything moves nice and easily. Everything looks pretty good here. So the next step is to mount your servo arm to the servo and then go ahead and mount your steering link to that arm. You can see here that I've got a modified aluminum arm and I'll get to the reasoning for that in my third video where I cover some of my issues. If you're using the stock red cat arm or another arm that's the same length as the stock red cat arm, everything should work out pretty well. If you're using one of these very common aftermarket arms, these are longer than the stock arm. If you've got your bumper mount moved back like I do, this longer arm will interfere. So you need to either use the stock arm or an arm of the same length as stock. I'll take you through some of that mitigation in my follow-up video. But for now, you can see that this is the final step getting everything installed. Now you just need to set your steering endpoints and you should be ready to go. 
So now you can see that our portals are all installed into the truck. The articulation is great. The steering seems to be really good. And overall, I'm real happy with how this came out. We had to work through a couple of small issues that I'll get more into detail on in the third video, especially for those folks who have already got these installed who just want to be able to see the remedies for some of those issues that they might have had. But now I'm just going to take this, I'm going to go out, I'm going to use it, I'm going to get familiar with how this truck works, and then I'll give you guys a full review on my findings. So thanks for sticking around guys and look forward to the next one.